So continuing chapter 17, we're going to talk about how to do calculations with a buffer. So you might need a calculator for this. And you also want to find your formula sheets because there's going to be a formula that I'm going to derive here. It's underneath the equilibrium section. So you can check that out as well. So these are all in your notes already. Um, so um, I just want to show you where this um, equation comes from. Uh, it's called the henderson hochelbach equation. Uh, so when we have a weak acid, and I'm using X here, I probably should just use HA, but um, you could see it multiple ways. Um, you're gonna have the ions on top and then the acid on the bottom. If you take the log of both sides, um, it would be the log KA, um, and then it would be uh, the log of this expression as well. Um, if I separate this out and find log of H, which of course we know is pH, and then just take the log of x minus over hx. Then if I take the negative of everything, okay, then the negative log of Ka is the pKa, the negative log of h plus is the pH, and then you're left with the negative log of x minus over hx. So um, how you typically see this equation is, uh, you bring this over to this side and you're left with this equation, which is called the henderson hochelbach equation. And this is the equation that's on your formula sheet. So you don't need to memorize this. Um, it is already on there. So they do it um, as A minus over HA. That's how they have it in your formula sheet. So if you want to write that in your notes, um, so that is essentially going to be the anion. So usually that's going to be coming from your salt and then whatever the weak acid happens to be. Well, I also like to show you, well, what if you were given a more of a basic solution? Could I do a POH? You can. So please understand this is the PKB. Now what is different about bases is just what, how do you write a generic base? Um, that's always the tough part. So I'm going to write it over here. So base plus water. Uh, base and then an H plus because it's been accepting the H plus and then you're left with OH. So I'm going to show you a calculation here using that so you can feel comfortable with it, but just know that the henderson hochelbach equation uh, is on your formula sheet. So go to the next page and let's try to do some of the calculations associated with buffers. Okay, I'm just going to refocus. Okay, all right. So find the pH of a solution with 0.25 molar ammonia and ammonium chloride. So first off, you have to recognize that these are, this is a buffer. So that's really gonna be your trickiest part of all of these calculations is understanding what do you have. So ammonia is a weak base. Ammonium chloride is NH4Cl, that is a salt, okay. So I could use the henderson hochelbach equation, uh, but I do need to look up ammonia's Kb value, and it happens to be 1.8 times the negative fifth. Um, so I guess I should have also mentioned that while you're doing uh, this video, you probably need your Ka and Kb table as well. So I'm gonna do a calculation with the POH version of the henderson hochelbach equation, just so you could see where it's useful. So that's going to be the pKb plus the log of, and again, NH4 plus what is coming from the salt goes on top, and then the base is going to go on the bottom. And this is going to be pretty typical because this is going to be the most common weak base that we deal with. So that means the pKb is going to be this number negative log of it. Well, it comes out to be 4.74. You're going to see that number multiple times. It just so happens to be that. The log of, well, what's the concentration of the ammonium chloride? Um, well, that happens to be 0.4, so that's going to go on top. And what's the concentration of the base? That is 0.25 molar. And then um, divide those two numbers and take the log of it. Well, it comes out to be about 0.20. So your final answer is about uh, 4.94 is your pOH. But of course, that's not your pH. So you subtract that from 14, and you're left with 9.06 as your pH, okay? So you could do this calculation, all right, doing it 
using All right, I paused there for a second. You can do these calculations doing the common ion way as well, okay? But the henderson hockelbach equation just gets there faster, just gets there faster. So see if you could do the next two. Uh, first one is acetic acid with sodium acetate, and the second one is hydrofluoric acid and sodium chloride. So I will show you the answers here in a second. All right, so these next two, uh, I'm gonna show you the answers and spend more time on the last one, which is a little more interesting. Uh, so acetic acid with sodium acetate, acetic acid's Ka is 1.8 times the negative fifth. Please note that 4.74 is the negative log of that number. Yes, it is the same as your ammonia. Please do not get confused. I know I always get confused about that. So you're gonna take the acetate's gonna be on the top, the weak, base, the weak acid's gonna be on the bottom, so it'll be 0.1 over 0.25, you take the log of that. Uh, it turns out to be a negative value, so you subtract it from 4.74, and you end up with a pH of 4.34. Uh, then the other example here is hydrofluoric acid, HF, and sodium fluoride, NAF. If you look up HF's Ka value, it's 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. You take the negative log of that, and that is 3.14. You're taking F minus the fluoride over the HF, hydrofluoric acid. It's 0.1 over 0.15. Uh, and you end up with a pH of 2.96. So I'm going back to kind of uh, the first page of the notes. Um, our uh, combining of sodium acetate and acetic acid. Okay. So again, this is my salt, this is my weak acid. So again, now understanding that this is a buffer and using the henderson hockelbach equation, I know 4.74 is the negative log of the 1.8 times the negative fifth plus the log of my acetate over my acetic acid. So that's going to be 4.74 plus the log of, well in this case they are both 0.1. So 0.1 molar over 0.1 molar. So what's the log of 1? It's 0, so you get 4.74. So this is a unique situation, okay? This is called a perfect buffer, okay. so it's called a perfect buffer. Now the reason it's called a perfect buffer is because it equally neutralizes both acid and base. And that is because if I have equal concentration of both the acidic component and the basic component, then they will equally take care of whatever is added in there. So if I were to draw this in a beaker, and if I were to draw it kind of this way, the actual two species in there would be drawn to be pretty much the same size. So that's what we mean to have a perfect buffer. So if your pH equals your pKa, that is your perfect buffer for that situation. So it could neutralize both an acid and base. So if you go back to a situation like this, where you have more acid than you do the basic component, that means it could take on more base than it could take on an acid. Uh, this one being very acidic, um, it could neutralize a lot of base, but not as much acid added to it. So again, the henderson hockelbach equation is going to be your go-to for doing these types of buffer calculations. The tricky part is just understanding that it's a buffer.